Wow, sorry guys, I was a little late. Uh, had a had another farmer actually come and talk to me, so I had to go talk to him about doing some uh, doing some trapping. So uh, apologize there for that. Uh, appreciate everybody joining tonight, but uh, we are good to go. So let me let me go in here and log into my uh, where I can see the chat, and then we're gonna get started tonight, guys. So anyway. Appreciate uh, everybody joining me. This should be a pretty good one. I had a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of, a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and everything, uh, you know, from the last time. So, should be a fun little evening here. I kind of got to got to where I enjoy these these live videos here. So, let me log in here in my other way. You got to see the jankiness that I got going here to to do this, guys. I I really need internet, you know. But anyway. Yeah, appreciate everybody joining in here. So let me get logged in here to where I can see the chat, and then uh, that'll give everybody just a few more minutes to uh, to filter in, and then we'll go ahead and get started here this evening. So anyway, yeah, I've uh, I've been trapping muskrats for the last couple of days, and uh, stop, stop. There we go. Okay. Now I got the chat. All right, so yeah, been trapping muskrats for a few days, um, hearing around like different farmers' ponds, right? And uh, I was had a bunch of sets, that, well, a few sets, and uh, one farmer's pond today, and actually he had told somebody else, and so um, another farmer came up, and we went and looked at his property. So I made a couple of sets on on his property too. So I was running a little late tonight. Uh, apologize, but we're up and we're going right now. So appreciate everybody. Uh, Everybody joining in. Let me see if I catch up on the comments. Yep. Pretty good, pretty good. Yep, so we don't have a ton of muskrats around here. Uh, you know, if I can do 100 a year, that's that's really doing it, right? Uh, but we had quite a... Um, quite quite a drought, I guess you would call it. I mean, we had a good period with route rain this summer and a lot of little creeks and stuff dried up. And I think it pushed a lot of those like pears and threes and fours, you know, just the few muskrats that were living in the little creeks that pushed them into the ponds where the water was because those creeks dried up. Uh, so anyway, that's what I've been doing. Uh, just kind of going around and then muskrats seem to have stayed in those ponds, right? Uh, the farmer that contacted me tonight, uh, his actual, the back side of his dam, it was already starting to cave in, and there's only two rats in there, he says. So I could only find two runs, so I set them, and uh, and we'll see. But it doesn't look like there's many, but, you know, it doesn't take a lot of muskrats to do some damage in a pond. So anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um, so anyway, for, for the title of the video, many you guys know. So I think it was, I don't know, last live or live before that or whatever. Uh, I got hungry. <laughs> And I had some uh, deer loin there in the refrigerator, you know, just for snack material out here. And I uh, cooked it up. And boy, I tell you what, I had so many people um, comment and and request, uh, message me different things, wanting more cooking stuff. So I've been on the muskrat thing for the last couple of days, and I thought, well, hell, we'll just uh, we'll cook up a muskrat because they're really good eating. As I've said before, muskrat and beaver are two my two favorite uh, critters to eat, you know, of the things that I catch. So, yep. Uh, that's that's what we got going. So, oh, table of death over there. It's got decent. So I had like 16 sets out today, um, and uh, ended up with seven rats and three coons. So really not not too awful bad. Obviously they were they're setting rats. Um, so your percentages, you know, are usually quite a bit higher whenever you set for rats. Um, but yeah, pretty enjoyable. Uh, you know, just playing around here with just a few few feeder houses just a couple of rats here and there but anyway that's what I've been going on it is crazy warm here it hit like 70 degrees today guys it was nuts I was sweating I don't like that um but yeah pretty pretty warm right in the comments here Oh, let's see. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, muskrats are destructive. Muskrats are destructive for sure. All right, so we've been going a little bit here. Uh, just a few little housekeeping things. So for everybody that um, that's in here, right, obviously uh, you guys know I have some issues with some service here. So if the chat does go just blank, uh, I'll just refresh the page, right? Um, I'm going to do my best not to move my phone underneath that lead, or that loft there. Last time, that's what happened. Um, obviously, like I said, just refresh that page uh, and... You know, I'll, I'll resume the, the live feed. You guys will know whenever I end. I'll say goodnight and everything else. But, yeah, that happened last week. Uh, we had, like, 900 people in here, and we lost about half of them whenever that happened. So so that was a bad deal. Uh, but, yeah, just refresh that page, and uh, we'll definitely be going back. Just a quick reminder. Another quick reminder is, guys, I'm still struggling trying to get you guys to hit that like button. Last video, um, one in ten of y'all hit that like button, and it's free, and YouTube is hammering on me lately uh you know with my video I'm getting demonetized a video almost every day now so if you guys would uh, hit that thumbs up button you can do it right now on this video just hit that thumbs up button we've got 260 people in here uh we ought to be able to have all those thumbs up right i preach it all the time uh and if you would that just really helps me so anyway that's that like i said youtube's been hard lately uh They've been they've been hammering on me pretty hard lately with the with the videos. About one, I get an email a day saying that that a video has been taken down. Um, this morning it was a boarding video of all things, right? Uh, not a skin and video or even a flesh and video, but just a boarding video. Uh, they they hit me on. So anyway, we're gonna try to work through it. I've been trying to kind of I've been playing that fine line lately. Uh, but like I said, I'm doing this all for you you guys uh you know i'll do it as long as i can here but anyway um yeah that's that's kind of been my my going through here we had our deer season um had our deer season uh last weekend second shotgun season so now now we're kind of good now we're kind of in the clear so um yeah got side by side out got it uh got it ready to go so hopefully we're supposed to get quite a little bit of rain this weekend after that passes, maybe we can get out and start doing a little bit more, a uh, little bit more canine trapping, you know, just kind of, you know, expanding a little bit. Obviously, I'm not doing, not going big this year, but, uh, you know, I, I've played with the coons a little bit now. Now we're messing with the muskrats. I've got some beaver stuff lined up. So, yeah, just taking it easy. Uh, I'll tell you what, the, the hobby trapper thing versus just going at it like I normally do, it's two totally different mindsets. Uh, I'm kind of enjoying this, you know, I'm just kind of, meandering through it a few sets here like i said i only had 16 sets out uh you know but that's fun anyway so that's what we got going playing the weather more than anything this year so anyway a uh, couple other things a couple other things oh i want to give a shout out i don't know if they're uh watching or not i don't know if they're watching live or not but um you know I think, I don't know, one or two lives ago, um, where we were skinning, I had mentioned that my work sharp knife sharpener, it had took a dump on me, right? I've had that thing since they first came out. I've sharpened, I don't know how many thousands of knives with it. And, uh, and Justin, Justin had saw that and he had one that he didn't really like. And so he offered to actually, he contacted me, offered to send it to me. Uh, so I was just very gracious of that. So anyway, here it is. It came in the mail the other day. Uh, brand new work sharp. Man, really appreciate that. Justin, if you're watching, uh, you definitely didn't have to do that, bud, but I, I really do appreciate it. And also, he's got a son, a 12-year-old son, Garrett. And uh, Garrett, is he's shown a, quite an interest in trapping. So uh, I saw some pictures. Uh, they did some trapping over Thanksgiving, and uh, they're they're putting everything up too and they're put up just looks just looks phenomenal uh you know that they did a bunch of coons and i mean they look great so uh justin and garrett big shout out to you guys i don't know if you're watching live or not uh if not um uh, hopefully you'll see this later but if you are uh give a shout out to garrett guys young trapper coming up uh that's an awesome hobby to get into especially at 12 years old so uh really hope you really hope you stay with it garrett um really appreciate it uh, it's something that you'll enjoy for a long time so 
anyway, that's, I think, that's all the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, yeah, I'll take a couple of questions here, I guess, and then I am pretty hungry, so we are going to, we are going to cook some, uh, cook some muskrat here tonight. Like I said, it's been a, it's been a week, man. I'm glad tomorrow's Friday. I'll tell you what, it's just been one of those weeks. So, yeah. So we'll take a couple of questions here, uh, real quick. And then, uh, then I, I will, I, I'm, we're going to start, we're going to start cooking up here pretty quick. So I'm sure that's why a lot of you guys came. Um, like I said, the, Cooking the muskrat and the beaver, those are about the two, two of my favorites here, so. My, uh, my chat here has some, seemed to froze, so let me see here if I can get that going again. Wouldn't you know it, uh, whenever you say, there we go, now it's going again. Yep. What do I do for a living? So I am a I am a carpenter. Um, that's that's what I I've been in the trades, uh, all my life basically. Uh, came up through it, and uh, yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. Uh, you know, you work hard, but it's also a very performance based career, I guess you would call it. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be a guy that just kind of slugs along. You know, uh, it's it's pretty rewarding. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, work outside. I mean, you guys probably don't know. Um, yeah, I, I actually went to college uh, for a couple of years. My full intentions going through high school was to be a high school history teacher. I had a very big interest in, uh, in history. And to be quite honest, I was not sad about having summers off. Uh, but yeah, that's, that was kind of my story. I was working, working all the time, working through school and everything. And then one day, uh, one day it just kind of hit me, boy. I just, I'd rather be outside. So that was the story. I, uh, I finished out that semester and I never went back. So it cost me a little bit of money. Uh, obviously I was paying for it, uh, myself, you know, but yeah, I think it was a good decision in the long run. Let's see here. Favorite brand of trap. I don't have a favorite brand of trap. Um, I've got five or six different brands, and, uh, you know, they all catch fur. So I am definitely not biased to one or the other. Um, I really, uh, I really just, I use what works. So, so we got a super chat here I want to catch up on. Alex Reiner. I'll try buy a case of natties on me. Hey man, I appreciate it. I will indeed. It'll go straight to the beer fund. Cheap beer. It works. I appreciate it, Alex. <laughs> no. Let's see. Why don't I have any videos of bobcats? <laughs> That's funny. So I actually caught one caught one yesterday um had to release it you guys will see it in another video uh video coming up once i get it all edited but yeah the reason we don't have a lot of i don't have a lot of videos of bobcats i've got a lot of videos of releasing bobcats uh, is because our season here in illinois is kind of funky um there is a a tag it's a lottery drawing but they want 500 tags for the entire state and that's everybody that's the PETA people that's the shotgun hunters that's the trappers it's just a you apply, you give them like five or six bucks that you never get back. And, uh, you know, there's only 500 tags that get uh, given out for the whole state, right? So that's the deal. I've now been trying to draw a tag for five years. Uh, I have yet to draw a tag. So obviously I catch them. I don't set for them. Um, you know, I, I don't set for them because I just know I have to release them, right? But, uh, I catch several every season. Um, some of them I video, some of them I don't. You know, it kind of gets old after a while. But, yeah, we've definitely got more bobcats around here than uh, than I think the DNR knows. Um, I think their statistics are a little skewed. But, you know, I think I honestly think the way the lottery is, too, is I don't really agree with that. But that's, that's going into politics, and we're not going to talk about them all, that, that. So, yeah, that's the reason you guys don't see – a lot of the bobcat stuff, I can't keep them. Um, a lot of you guys ask about badger. Don't have badger. We have a limit of one. 
Um, I've never seen any. I've never seen any sign of badger. I've never heard of anybody catching one, at least not around me. Uh, apparently, they're here for some reason, you know. But I mean, just like the bobcats, I can tell you right now, there's more bobcats at least in my general area, then there is gray fox, right? And we have an unlimited season on gray fox, but the bobcat's a, a special thing. So, you know, it's just whatever, uh, playing by the rules. Yeah, I, I get a lot of questions asked on, uh, on badgers quite a bit, too. I think those are really the only two, uh, you know, at least for my area. I uh, Hopefully one day I'll draw a tag, um, and then uh, and we'll be good to go, because I, I don't think I'll have a problem catching one, and then you guys will get to see it, too, so... Yep. Let's see. We'll take questions for just a little bit, and then uh, then I'm gonna get to cooking here. Like I said, guys, it was 70 degrees today, uh, or at least I mean, uh, not 68 or something. It was stupid warm. Uh, so we don't have a fire going. <laughs> we're we're gonna cook on the wood stove because I feel like if I say in the first shed, we gotta cook in the first shed. But uh, yeah, we're if I can't cook on the on the stove on the stove with fire so we're gonna cook on the stove but not on the stove tonight i got the little uh induction heater thing go or induction burner thing going but yeah crazy warm crazy warm <laughs> so let's see let me catch up let's see yeah I, a lot of people get the tags it's uh it's just, they say it's just a random draw, but man, I I don't know. I don't really quite agree with it, but let's see. Going through the comments here, see if I got any anything I missed, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I had issues with uh, uploading that video Sunday, so I just kind of pushed everything back a day this week. Oh, we're doing this on a Thursday rather than a Wednesday. Um, yeah, that long video it just took forever to took forever to upload. So that's the reason I know a little impromptu. Like I said, normally my upload schedule is uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. So. Yep. Let's see. Make sure I miss the comments. We got another super chat. Tommy Waters. Tommy Waters. When are you going to do a brain tanning video? Um, Brain tanning video, Tommy. I have one made. It just hasn't been edited out yet, if that makes sense, right? Um, so I really appreciate the uh, the super chat, Tommy. Yeah, you guys will see a brain tanning video this season. Um, obviously, like I said, it it just there's a lot to filming and editing and everything else, uh, you know. So I've got a bunch of videos stockpiled up. I just to get them edited up, it just takes a while. Um, you know, in a, a tanning video like that, you know, it's got a lot of different parts. Uh, so, anyway, you guys will definitely see see a brain tanning video this year. I know everybody's been asking about that. And then the reason for the one, uh, you know, I did those two parts. And then I had a corrupted file uh, whenever I filmed the tanning part of it. So, I wasn't able to do, do that one. And then, uh, so I re- did everything basically my plan was to try to like mimic what i had um so i've got that and uh and i just need to get it all edited and uploaded. you guys will see that so obviously uh like i said i'm trying to kind of stay one video with the uh, kind of the outdoors side of it and i wanted to do one in the first shed uh every week and the in the first shed obviously is kind of turning into this live thing i really like this live thing uh, it's fun just to come out and hang out with you guys, you know. Like I said, with, with YouTube hammering on me right now, uh, you know, I'm kind of walking on pins and needles as it is. So these live deals, they seem to let a little bit more slide through anyway. So anyway, that's uh, that's that's kind of the gist of that. But, yeah, I appreciate it, Tommy. Let's see if I'm missing. Uh, let's see. Why don't I use wire... Wire stretchers. So I've talked about this quite a little bit. Uh, I did. Whenever I first started out, I used wire. Um, now, back whenever I sold the Napa and everything, and you got to remember, this is kind of in the, I don't know, I want to say the peak of my, my generation, peak of the fur, you know. You were getting more money on wood. I, I don't care what anybody says. You were getting more money if it was put up on wood. 
So I slowly made the change uh, over to wood, and I've just never never left, right? Uh, so that's the reason. There's nothing wrong with putting on wire. I think I've got, I think every video I've got up as far as the fur handling ones, I've got a wire one to go with it. There's nothing wrong with it, um, but you know, I just I do believe that your finished product is better. Some will disagree with me as far as getting more money, as far as uh, you know, putting them up on wood. But I don't know. I think you get a very a more consistent product. Um, nowadays, it's it's hard to tell, right? Because you just got fur is just it's so bad across the board that it's hard to see the difference, right? But back what back in the day, whenever it really meant something, I honestly believe that you got more uh, putting up on wood. That's that's my my personal preference too. Like I said, I. Yeah, a lot of this is personal preference. So we've got another super chat here. I want to make sure I get. Um, we've got Todd Hamilton. Todd Hamilton, can you do a start to finish video on making a PVC beam? Would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Todd. Uh, you know, I get a lot of questions on the PVC beam. Now, you know, you got to remember with the PVC beam, a lot of it's personal preference, right? Uh, some people like a horizontal beam. Some people are like me and like that more vertical beam. Um, but yeah, there seems to be a lot of interest in it. I don't know exactly if you're talking frame or just, you know, the cutting them out, cutting the, the you know, the beam out of the pipe or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that'll definitely be something, uh, definitely something I'll look into. So I appreciate the super chat, Todd. Let's see. Have I ever sold green? Oh, by the way, guys, for those of you that's kind of new into this, um, uh, if you write at my channel name, um, it highlights it for me, so I can really pick out your questions a lot better. Because, uh, like I said, they come pretty fast. So, have I ever sold green? Um, no, I have honestly never sold green except for the very first year I sold like two or three. Um, but I have always finished my fur out uh, from day one. I just always thought that was the you know all my research that was the way to do it. And honestly, I never had the freezer space. I, that was the biggest thing, is I had to do something with it. Uh, so, yeah, I've never really sold green. I've always finished my stuff out. I can tell you right now, if you're worried about it, a cheap flesh and knife and a dozen wire stretchers will get you a long way. Um, like I said, I, right now, it's kind of a, a toss-up. Is it really worth it? Because, you know, the majority of fur is just, it's so down. But, uh, no, I, I really prefer, if I'm going to do all this I'd rather just go all the way and finish it, in my opinion. Um, and uh, I really enjoy it. I, I really do enjoy being out here in the first shed. I would say I enjoy it just as much, if not just a little bit more, than being out on the line. I love working with the fur. Uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, it sounds corny, but it's almost an art to a degree, you know? I mean, you, you see it all the way through. So, anyway, let's see here. Um... We got another super chat here. I want to catch up on Adam. Adam uh, e Egerberg. Probably butchered your last name, but Adam. Uh, Sent post sets and flat sets uh, with the new camera. Keep it up. Okay, so yeah, a lot of questions. I appreciate that super chat, Adam. Yeah, we're gonna do um, we're gonna do some different settings. So I got a new lens for my camera, right? And it's not quite a zoomed in lens, so I can get a lot closer to stuff. Uh, that's what the it's not a new camera. It's a lens right for my big camera. That's what you guys kind of saw in the last video uh, But yeah, definitely gonna do some different sets uh, for you guys I know that's a big deal especially with the canines different sets. So once I get some daylight uh, get a good weekend um, I, we'll, we'll definitely get some sets out for you guys set videos Okay, another one how do I normally stake down traps? Um, so Let's see So I, I stake primarily, I guess you'd call it three different ways, right? So I've got a, let's see, this one here. So I used to only use pogos. Uh, I was a strict pogo guy. I really liked them. Uh, and then it got to where I was starting to trap a lot more in the frozen. We had like two or three winters there where it got super, super cold. Ground froze down like a foot. And, uh, you know, I was having to pre-drill all these pogos and everything. So I made this, started making the switch at least especially on my canine sets to these, uh, these fin super stakes here. They're kind of pricey. They're about three bucks a piece, right? Then whenever you got a bunch of traps that, that hurts. Um, 
but I buy these, the finned ones. They've got this uh, little loop here, kind of this retrieval loop. You have to add your own cable. Um, but they're a chain fin super stake. These things are about bulletproof. Um, I get them from Minnesota is where I buy them. A lot of other places have them, but they're, they're finned super stakes. I've basically converted all my canine sets to these just because they're bulletproof. You're dry, you get a driver that sits in there. That thing turns, it will not come out. And then to pull them with this cable, this cable sticking up. So the thing just pulls straight up and out. And these are cast. These are, these are cast. They're super durable. Like I said, they cost a little bit more. Um, but man, if you're punching in a bunch of sets, uh, they'll pay for themselves, I think. So I use these for uh, a lot of my canine sets. Uh, I still run a lot of pogos. All my dog proofs and all my one and a half still have pogos on them. So I've got the ability to, to put a pogo in the ground if I want to. Pogos hold great in soft ground. Uh, but as you guys have seen over, I don't know, probably the last three years or so, three, four years, I have gone to where I use two inch fence staples for almost a hundred percent of my staking for my dog proofs, my one and a halves, uh, you know, the small stuff. And whether that be staking hard to like a tree root or a tree or using a drag or a toggle or a sapling or something, uh, I really, really have gone to that. I really enjoy that kind of staking method. It's super easy, super quick too. That's one of the big things. So that's my staking method. Hope that helps. I, I, you can use whatever, but, uh, you know, I've gone to fence staples for a hundred, almost a hundred percent. I think I've only put two pogos in the ground. I still use pogos for my drowners, for my beavers, uh, because I've got that set up on 10 foot, 10 feet of cable. I got a pogo on one end and then a, a drowning weight on the other. Um, but yeah, it makes it super convenient if you use fence staples with the pogos, because you just put that fence staple over the cable and then that pogo will stop that to pull it through and then you don't have to change a bunch of stuff around. So anyway, uh, let me let's see. Make sure I'm not missing anything. We've got another super chat here. Uh, Greg, Greg Dazer. Hope I'm saying your last name right, Greg. I put a, I put a few Fox up on wire because that's what I had. Uh, I made some wood stretchers. Can a high be rehydrated um, to redry on wood? I want to tan them, and I'm looking for symmetry. Great question, Greg. Awesome, awesome question, and I really do appreciate the super chat. Okay, so if you've put them up on wire and you're going to tan them yourself, there's absolutely no reason to try to rehydrate them and put them on, uh, on wood, right? Once you tan them, you're going to break that hide out. Uh, and it's going to be, I mean, it's not going to change, right? There's, there's, there's no reason for you to rehydrate and put them on, on wood. Uh, once you tan that, once you break them out, it's going to look the exact same. Uh, moving forward, if you want to put them up on wood, now that you have the wood stretchers, by all means, go, go for it. Um, but once they're, the difference between once they're dried and once they're tanned is a big difference. There'll actually be a little bit of shrinkage. Uh, whenever you tan it, it won't actually be the same size and it will change a little bit depending on um, whether you break it or not, or if you're sending them out, I don't know if you're sending them out commercially or not. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't go ahead. I wouldn't go through all the trouble of rehydrating them, especially with Fox. Fox are finicky to begin with. So uh, just go ahead and them out and then and enjoy it. Great question though. Great, great question. Uh, let's see, make sure I'm not missing anything here. Started using a post knife. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people like the post knife. I, I, I do. Um, it, you, you don't know, uh, you know, there's different people like the different flex in a, in a fleshing knife or a rigid knife. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I, I like the post knife. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So good way to get a fin super stake out of the ground. If you didn't add the retrieval cable, um, I am in the process of making a video. I've got a couple more things to add, but I have got videos coming this winter and they're going to be strictly on the removal of stakes. I've got a ton of different tools depending on your methods. Uh, if you're packing in or if you're on side by side, 
But yeah, I'm, there will be a video coming uh, sometime this winter once I get it all put together, uh, different methods to retrieve steaks. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got some little tricks, you know, that I've learned over the years that may help you guys. So, uh, let's see. Here we have a question. If you repair a hide by sewing it, uh, can you dry it prior to repair and repair after rehydrating? Or does it have to be done before? Uh, now it depends on if you're going to tan it or not. But definitely, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to ship it off or sell it, um, sew it before you dry it, 100%. A uh, lot of, lot of, lot of rehydrating all of a sudden. Um, you know, if you're rehydrating hides, you've done something wrong. Uh, so, so don't just don't finish out a hide and then think you can correct a bunch of stuff by rehydrating. Um, I don't want to don't want to get that that confused. Um, but definitely, if at all possible, sew that sew that hole, cut whatever before you dry it. Um, you can do it after tanning and everything. But yeah, definitely if you can, uh, I I prefer sewing it before uh, you know before uh, putting it on the board or or anything else. So. We've got a, a couple of super chats I want to catch up on. Don't leave anybody behind here. We've got Upstate New York Outdoors. Love your videos, man. Uh, you're part of the reason we started our own channel. Thanks for all the great info over the years. Upstate New York Outdoors. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Yep. Um, you know, running channels and stuff's hard. Uh, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I think I've. It, it's pretty rewarding, you know. Um, pretty rewarding whenever you. you get people that message you and contact you and say, you know, it's, it's really, uh, helped out. So that was the biggest reason I started this channel was way back when it was just, just knowledge, education, right? And it still is to this day. Um, I put education over entertainment, uh, in every video, I think, and I don't know if it's held me back or not, but it's, it's the way I like to be. So anyway, uh, we've got, a let's see, Jack Norton. We got a super chat from him. With a cheap dispatch gun for trapping, um, you know, the just really depends. Uh, you know, the little um, oh, what are they called? The little badgers, um, savage. I can't think of the name of the savage bandits or something. They're they're hundred bucks or something. You know, more than likely you probably if you got any twenty two, you're good. Uh, you know, I don't overthink this uh, as far as as far as dispatch. So. Let's see. We got another super chat coming here. I want to catch up on uh, Thomas Thomas McCloughty McCloughty Thomas. I hope I did not screw your name up. Um, he says, "Have a merry Christmas coming up, Stu." Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Thomas, and thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, I hope you guys have a merry Christmas too. So it is coming up pretty quick. So. 2020 is about over with, guys, and I'll tell you what, I, for one, am ready to get it out. I'm, I'm about over this, this 2020, so, yep. Yeah, air, uh, there's some air rifles. Air rifles are a great choice, guys, so if many of you guys don't know, uh, I've actually got it right here. Uh, this year, this year, I'm using a, an air rifle for dispatch. This is the, um, this is the Air Force Talon SS. It's a suppressed um, suppressed air gun. It's 25 caliber. This thing is, it's awesome for dispatch. Not only that, uh, you know, because you can slow that, slow that bullet down. Um, and that's, you know, that's a big deal whenever, uh, you know, you're talking dispatch. So you don't got, get a lot of trauma, you know? So I, I've been very happy with it so far. Air Force, uh, you guys can check them out. Like I said, uh, pretty happy with it so far. I've been beating the hell out of this thing and it's it's been holding up great you know another thing is almost all this thing is aluminum right so it's uh you know that's a that's a big advantage so anyway uh let me see here i gotta get a drink y'all and then we're gonna get to cooking here because that's what this whole video was about um then we'll answer some questions later but i'm getting awfully hungry so anyway I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Uh, if you would, if you uh, would take a minute, guys, and hit that like button, I sure would appreciate it. It really does help me out. I know I push it a lot, but, uh, you know, it's free to do, and it, and it really helps me out. So, 
anyway, I see old Trapper Jay's in the chat. That gun, that guy is blowing up this year, man. Congrats, man. I really do. Uh, I don't get to watch all your videos. No offense. I just don't have a lot of time, but you are blowing up. And uh, I know it's got to be a ton of work uh, putting up those videos every day. So congrats, man. All right, let's take a couple more questions here, and then I'm going to get to cooking because I'm hungry. I'm not eating. Uh, I came straight in from pulling traps there, and uh, and I'm hungry. So let's see here. Oh, let's catch up on anything here. Got a lot of new people in here, new trapping. That's exciting. Yeah, it's really getting going um, this time of year. Like I said, we kind of got our deer season over with, so, uh, you know, that's that's good for me. I can really kind of start getting out and about, I guess you would say. Uh, our deer seasons around here just, they really screw up things as far as, as, far as getting out and around. So, anyway. All right. So we're going to get to cooking here. I'm going to move this camera just a little bit here so you guys can kind of see what I got going. Um, a lot of people want to know about muskrats, right? So like I said, muskrats really good eating. Um, we're going to leave the table of death alone. and I've got this cleaning board here. By the way, if y'all are looking for a nice little table, uh, an ironing board works great for a table. <laughs> uh, and it's adjustable. So anyway, yeah, we're going to go ahead and like I said, it was 70 degrees outside. It's like 60 degrees in here. So I got the little cooktop. So we're going to cook this muskrat up. Um, now a couple of things. You want to look at the look at the livers whenever you, you clean your muskrats. Uh, make sure they're not spotted. There's a name for it. Um, but yeah. So, you know, a couple different ways to do it. This is going to be my favorite way. I feel like this is my favorite way to do the muskrat. I basically make a big stir fry out of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different... There's a lot of different things that you can do with it, but uh, I make a stir fry out of it. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started here. So really simple, actually. Um, I did a little bit of the preliminary work there inside just because uh, I didn't want to be chopping up a bunch of vegetables out here in the fur shed and stuff. But yeah, so we've got few things here pretty straightforward let's see here get everything kind of ready here for me and uh, then we'll get going hopefully you guys can see me there I can't read the comments but uh, hopefully you all can see so we've got uh, like I said this is a, just a a run-of-the-mill uh, kind of stir-fry. This is, this is super easy. Um, so this is all what I would consider for one good serving, right? Um, I kind of set this up so because I, I knew you guys would ask. So this is all kind of one serving. Um, obviously, just double everything if, if you want to if you want to make it for two, three, four, whatever. All right, so pretty straightforward and simple. I've got one muskrat right here. This thing's been in salt water since last night whenever I uh, I skinned it, and I pretty much just deboned it. You end up with, I mean, a good handful. So I'd say roughly about a half a pound of meat off this muskrat, uh, you know, whenever you, uh, I'll, I mean, here, here's one. Here's muskrat right here. You know, nice big muskrat. Um, go ahead and clean our hands off here before we start. But, uh, yeah. Nice big muskrat. Get about a half a pound of meat off of it or so, and uh, you can you can just leave the legs on them if you want. They don't really have a back strap, um, but you know you can do just the legs. I just prefer to debone it and be done with it. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. So we've got one back strap here. I've got about a cup of real uh, coarse chopped onions. I love onions, so if you're not into onions, skip that route. And then I've got uh, one pack, I've got one pack of Roman noodles. I just made the noodles. I didn't add the flavor. You can add the flavor if you want. 
Um, and then I've got one package here of uh, mixed vegetables. And uh, like I said, just double everything if you uh, if you want a bigger serving. But this all together makes makes a pretty dang good meal. It's just a big stir fry. As far as seasonings go here, we've got some garlic salt. We've got some uh, ginger. We've got some mixed garlic. I've got some of this uh, this stir fry sauce here, or whatever whatever you like. And then I like this uh, oyster sauce. It adds just a little bit of different flavor. And then uh, you know just your run of the mill soy sauce too. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and throw this up on the walk here. Um, if y'all haven't haven't got you a cast iron walk, you're missing out. Cause I love stir fry. I, I can stir fry anything. Uh, and the, the cast iron walk's really the way to go. So get this dude fired up here. Now with this muskrat, um, let me get. So we're cooking with bacon fat tonight, guys. Uh, you can use your oil or whatever, but this old boy likes his bacon fat. So I keep it all, and uh, and that is what we're that's what we're cooking in, right? So we're gonna get that uh, get that bacon fat good and melted there. Now with this muskrat meat, obviously. It's not a big animal, so it goes really quick. Uh, you know, with your stir fry, a lot of times you'll, uh, you know, you kind of put your meat in first. We're gonna do that, but uh, we're gonna go real quick with all our other stuff right after. So, just dumped in a big healthy bunch of uh, of garlic there. We're gonna put our onions in, get those caramelizing too, because I chopped them really coarse. Give that a go there. Like I said, if it was cold, I'd be doing this on the uh, on the wood stove, but uh, well, it's not. So so we're doing this on the top. So here's that muskrat meat. Um, here's that here's that muskrat meat. That's what it looks like there. You guys can see it. It's been in salt water all night. Uh, just nice little chunks, right? So they're already kind of in bite-sized pieces, uh, and that is that is what's going in there. You go ahead and throw that muskrat meat right in there. Like I said, this stuff does not take long because it's not there's not a lot of meat or not a lot of not a lot of body to it. I guess you would say. So throw that stuff in there. Uh, I cut as much fat and stuff away. You know, I clean the meat up about as about as good as I I could. Um, you know, but there's not a lot going on with the muskrat anyway. So anyway, get that going in there. Get that water off. Like I said, you're pretty much just looking to brown it. Uh, and then everything else is, you know, you can make your own vegetable mix or whatever, uh, but it goes real quick. So add just a little, uh, little splash of soy sauce to it there. Like I said, we've been going just real quick here, and the meat's already starting to brown. Uh, so this is a little induction burner in case you guys are. Are wondering but it, it works really good uh, for different things like that keeps it nice super hot so our meats already I would say roughly three quarters cooked our onions are caramelized um, I would bring you guys down here and look at it but I'm afraid I would lose service so you guys are just gonna have to stay there all right so we'll go ahead here and we'll add our vegetables in I just got some mixed vegetables there. Make sure we get them all. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my noodles in right now. And that is that is the gist of it right there, guys. That's that's the stir fry. All right. So we're going to let that go around and around for a little bit, kind of keep it moving there. 
We're going to add a few other seasonings here. I'm going to add just a, a nice little nice little dollop of ginger there. I like that. We started out with our garlic. Get that all incorporated in there. And once that meat gets almost all the way done, then I like to add my sauces. Kind of last. I, I like to add my sauces after I've kind of steamed off uh, all the other juices. And we're just about to it right now. So, like I said, you guys can see this is a really, really quick meal. So we've pretty much got everything, uh, got everything steamed off there. I'm going to keep the heat up just a little bit. So this is just a standard stir fry uh, sauce here. We're going to add, I don't know. That bottle was a little under half and I've still got a little bit left. So whatever that is. Put the sauce to your own liking. Let's, let's put it that way. Probably a couple of tablespoons worth of that oyster sauce in there. And then just a little dusting of garlic, salt. And I had pepper. Normally I had pepper, but I didn't bring it out tonight. I was trying to bring the whole kitchen out here in the first shed. So Anyway, that's it. Stir that sucker around, guys, and you've got yourself a muskrat stir-fry. Uh, muskrat, like, normal, like a lot of wild game meat, uh... You know, you don't want it just super, super uh, well done. You know, obviously these pieces were, were super small anyway, so they don't take too awful long. We're basically just making sure everything's heated up now, because, uh, like I said, all those mixed vegetables and stuff I left in the refrigerator uh, last night, so you know, you're just heating those up, basically. But anyway, let's see. If you guys can see that. That that looks good, right? That looks real good. My stove top's going all wonky on me because I left it alone. But uh yeah. That's it. We're we're done. I don't know what that took y'all. But she's done. So, I know y'all probably can't see, so I'll bring you guys over a nice little piece of muskrat while it's sitting there cooling down. That's a nice little piece of muskrat meat. Mm. That's good. That's so good. That's so good. I Like I said, you're talking about it, and when we talked about this in another live, uh, you know, a while back, muskrat, they're, they're vegetarians, right? So it's kind of like you are what you eat. They're a, um, they're a water cow, or, you know, an aqua cow, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's my muskrat stir fry. For those of you wondering, um, that is about the best way that I like eating it. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can barbecue it. You can, you know, there's a hundred different methods, right? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my favorite way to do it. So anyway, we'll go ahead and put this in a bowl here and then I'm going to walk up there and make sure I didn't miss anything. Because we was just chefing it up out here in the first shed. That is nice, guys. Muskrat. Now, obviously, like I said, um, I soaked that dude in salt water overnight. And uh, so that's what you get, basically. That's your serve. I mean, that, that's what I would consider one serving. Uh, you know, that's a good meal for me. But, you know, you can double it, triple it, do whatever. Uh, 
But yeah, that's that's about it. So soaked it in salt water. Wow, I gotta move you guys back. You're really close now. Uh so I soaked it in salt water overnight. Beaver is the same way. Um, you really don't want to, I don't know, you can eat it right right immediately, but uh, I definitely prefer definitely prefer to, to soak it in salt water. And they're not really bloody. These critters aren't. Um, now you can do that exact same thing that I just did in that stir fry pan with, uh, with beaver, and it's awesome too. Uh, but, but you obviously get a lot more yield off of a beaver and... Uh, and you uh, are able to, uh, you can do a little bit more. Okay. I'm scrolling back, guys, making sure I did not miss any super chats. And I did. We've got Lazy Bar 7. Next winter, when my house shot builder complete. <laughs> Coon Creek and Trapper J Club at my ranch. Coyote and Coon Trapping Hunting Extravaganza comments. Uh, let them know what's up. <laughs> Lazy Bar 7, I appreciate the super chat. I'd be up for that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So, so we got a question here. Are there any glands in the muskrat to watch out for? Yeah, there's mus there's glands in the muskrat. Same place as you normally would find them. Uh, you know, under the arms and in the back. Uh, about the same as all. You know, you've got, got the same glands and scent glands in a deer, you know, basically. They're all about in the same same spot so like i said i would uh i'd show you one right now but i'm trying to kind of i'm treading treading water here with the youtube so we may not be able to uh we may not be able to do that tonight so we've got another super chat here appreciate appreciate you answering my repair question i don't sell fur and i'll be tanning them didn't realize you could sell after tanning as well yeah, you can sew after tanning. So um, appreciate Hilltop. Appreciate it a lot. So yeah, if you actually watch a lot of the um, the garment manufacturers, there's several videos on it. But uh, you know they sew after they do a lot of their sewing after tanning. Um, they've got these really cool looking knives, and uh, you know it's it's very similar to how I say you they cut out a football shape and then they stitch it right up for the garment. You know because uh, a lot of times in those commercial tanning applications right the tanning process is fairly violent um you know you're putting them in the big drums and then uh you know just the breaking of the hide in general is pretty violent so there there is a lot of a lot of scars and cuts and everything else that open up uh during that process so yeah there's a lot of sewing gets done you can definitely sew it up after uh after the tanning is done and you do it basically the exact same way that uh, that I've showed in my videos, or that you do, you know, before before uh, boarding, I guess would be selling to the auction. You know, the, the whole idea, I mean, is you know, you don't want that big pelt with a big hole in it, right? You kind of want to hide it a little bit, uh, you know. But nine times out of ten, that's probably going to open up uh, whenever they do tan it commercially. So you know, you just kind of kind of pull the wool over their eyes for just a little bit. Um, but yeah. That is that. Uh, let's see here. Appreciate the, the super chat, though. Let's see. Let's see here. Make sure I didn't miss anything from you guys. Hope you all enjoyed the, uh, the cooking part of it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys enjoyed that or not. Uh, but I thought I thought there was a lot of interest in it. I had a lot of comments from last time. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out for you guys here in just a little bit here after uh, make sure you know I don't puke on camera or anything. Uh, make sure I'm not lying to you guys. But once it cools down a little bit, uh, we'll give her a good taste test. But. Anyway, that's what we're up to tonight, guys. I don't know how awful long we're going to go. We've been going an hour already, or just under an hour. So I've got quite a bit of stuff to do there tonight. Um, and I want to make sure I get all those rats and everything done done tonight because I'm probably going to have a decent, decent load of them tomorrow, too. So 
catch probably won't be quite as high since, uh, you know, that good portion of that was on the first night. So, let's see. Can you extract the glands out of coyotes and use it? Yeah, that's that's how they get coyote gland lure. Can you extract the glands out of a coyote and use it? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, one of the easiest ways to extract glands is right out of the D pads. You cut the D pads off and grind them up. That's that's a big scent gland in a coyote, uh, you know, and it's not hard to find for the average guy. Um, so, yeah, you can do that with just about any animal. Um, let's see. Make sure I'm not missing anything, guys. I know this one's a little different. Uh, we're not really doing anything. This is just more of a hangout session Q&A tonight. So I don't know if you guys like that like this format rather than a uh, than the regular uh, doing something or I don't know let me know maybe you guys don't even like this anymore we'll just uh, we'll go back to the videos but I enjoy this stuff it's pretty fun uh, hang out with you guys for a couple hours a week let's see here Make sure I'm not missing anything, guys. Comments are coming in pretty quick, but uh, catch many weasels? No, I don't catch many weasels. I've seen a couple, um, seen a couple in my life, but I'm pretty far south for weasel. Uh, I have seen a couple though. Let's see here. What's my preferred trap for fox and coyote? Well, that's two different things. That's two different critters, right? Fox and coyote. Um, my I, my go-to coyote trap, uh, I run Bridger number three, dogless, and I run Duke number fours. That's, they're the same size trap, just a different brand. The three and the Bridger is the same as the Duke number four. Um, there may be some better and there may be some worse, but I bought a bunch of Duke number fours uh, and I liked them. And then I bought a bunch of, I never had a dogless trap before. So I bought a bunch of Bridger number three dogless. Um, and I like those too. So I never, like I said, with the traps, I never really, uh, never really changed. Right. So, um, you know, I'm not one to sit there and buy one or two. I like to have all the same um, of, of everything, you know, pretty much. So I only have about four different brands of traps. I've got all that in a, and uh, I made a video this year, actually, of all my traps. So you guys can check that out if you want. Another quick thing, guys. Um, that leads me into another quick thing. So I've been doing this a long time now, right? And we get a bunch of new people. We get a big inflow of people every year this time. Uh, you know, and a lot of guys, uh, you know, they, they're new into it for the first time this year. So... I, I have been doing this now since 2012, right? I've got 200 and some videos. And over all those videos, I've tried my hardest to title them in a fashion that pertains to the subject matter, right? So for all those new guys out there, uh, you know, if you would take a look back at my videos, uh, you know, it's pretty simple to do. I've got several playlists too, but more than likely you're going to find an answer to the question you've been asked. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time now and over 200 videos, you know, I've, I've had a lot of content put out there. So I get a lot of questions all the time, um, you know, and you can tell they're, they're new people to the channel or new guys to the sport. And uh, they will ask a question that I actually have a video titled for, uh, you know, if that makes sense. So I really appreciate all the new people every year. Um, but yeah, definitely take a look back at all the previous videos. They all still pertain the same as... Uh, as the new videos right so anyway let's see here what's the difference between wood and pvc beams <laughs> you know i get that question all the time um so you know i mean you've got to be really using a wood beam um as far as being able to uh you know, kind of wear it out. That was always the biggest thing is where, you, where your knife comes off the end, you know, eventually you'll kind of kind of gouge it out or dig it. Uh, my biggest thing I would say with the PVC beams is just the, the fact that they're interchangeable. Uh, I could go, I've got four beams sitting here and actually in the last week I've used all four beams. 
Um, so, you know, you could have four wood beams if you want. But I really like that fact. Not only that with the PVC, um, and you can do this with the wood too, you know, but you're very, you're able to sculpt that to whatever you want. Uh, I don't know if one's better or worse. I really don't. I think it's more of a bad thing. Um, I've, I've been with the PVC beam for a lot of years. Uh, my first beam was a pine tree that I cut down in my backyard, the whole log, and I mounted it on an A-frame. So, and I mean, that got me through, right? So it, there's, I, I don't really see any big difference, right? Um, you know, you, my, I still got a couple. Uh, you go out and get you a two by eight and make that, a, a, you know, a very comparable beam to what that is. It's all how you work it down to, uh, to match your knife. Let's see here. Make sure I'm not missing anything guys. Um, yeah, I don't think we're, <laughs> we've been going a little bit. We'll probably go another little, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. And, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll just leave this as just a cool hangout. Um, <laughs> Q and A session tonight, and then I'm gonna take off, and then I'll I'll do the skin of tonight. I don't think we'll do much of that tonight, um, on the video. But yeah, appreciate everybody coming and hanging out. Um, if you all would, if you haven't already, hit that like button for me. It really helps. Um, I would appreciate it. So, let's see here. Any more questions you guys would like to? Uh, like to have me answer i'd be open for it here this is kind of what this live turning into so so i don't know do you guys like the live or would you rather just have a straight up video i really don't know um i i don't know because uh my last video there it, it it did decent, but, uh, you know, like I said, I always judge a video by the likes, and I'll tell you what, one in ten, I don't know if I'm, I'm hitting that audience where I want to, or, you know, so if you guys like the likes, let me know, or like the lives, rather, let me know. If not, we can, we can go to videos, so, let me see here, we got a super chat here. Uh, let's see. Lazy Bar Seven just saying six thousand acres here and permission to another fifty thousand ish. Thanks for all the great content. Have a great night, Lazy Bar. That is an amazing amount of acreage. My goodness, six thousand acres and fifty thousand. Wow. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do something. I, that'd be cool. I would definitely be up for an out of state, uh, out of state traffic trip. I think that would be cool. I think that would be really cool. Get out of this uh, this cornfield. So <laughs> I'm gonna try my supper, guys, because I'm still hungry. Give me a fork here. So she's cooled off now. That's what we're looking at. Just a nice stir fry. So obviously everything else is good. Um, but yeah, that's your muskrat. Everybody always wants to know. So. This is a nice little tender piece of muskrat. There's a little chunkier piece, you know. It doesn't get much better than that. Doesn't get much better than that at all, guys. Like I said, everybody always asks, do I eat what I catch? And uh, and 100%, I do. That is good. I'll tell you what, you would never... Uh, if you would prepare this for somebody who's never eaten it and, and say it was just beef uh, and, and give it to them, nobody would know. I mean, this is, you know, this was, you could serve this in a, in a restaurant and say it was, it was beef stir fry. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. There's no gaming taste to it whatsoever. Uh, but yeah. Definitely give it a go, guys. I get questions all the time about eating the stuff that I catch. And, uh, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong at all. You know, and muskrats are pretty, uh, you know, everybody, a lot of people start out with muskrats and different things. So, it's perfect. 
It's super tender. Like I said, I think there is something to be said about letting it set a day or so. Uh, but yeah, that's great. That is just great. We've got a super chat here. Um, Raising Woodsman. Raising Woodman. Thanks for the wisdom, brother. I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it very much. So, yeah, I think there is something to be said about letting it sit. You could let it sit longer, too. Um, I just wanted to do this video, so I pulled it out uh, of the fridge, you know, after being in salt water for a day. But yeah, that's a super easy meal. I don't know how long it took me, guys. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the clock, but I can tell you right now, I've done this so many times. It's a 10-minute meal, right? Uh, there's not a lot of prep to it. All I did to prep for this was... Uh, I put a package of noodles in the microwave and I chopped up an onion. I mean, that was, that was it. So anyway, that's what she looks like. Just an awesome, uh, awesome little stir fry dish. All right. I'm going to stop eating. I'm going to stop eating for a second. I know it's, I know it's rude. So, but yeah, definitely give it a go. Um, like I said, you can pretty much take any kind of meat like that. I did that this year, actually. Um, we were talking about that last weekend. So normally, whenever I, I shoot a deer, I like to let it hang. Uh, hang on the carcass, you know, for at least three or four days. Just kind of age it out. Uh, I've always done that. Which normally, our deer season, normally it's cold, right? This year it was not. It was not cold at all. Um mid 60s for a high uh or somewhere around there i don't know it didn't get below freezing though you know as long as it gets below freezing every night you can let them hang and it did not do that this year and uh so i was getting worried so i went ahead and cut everything up now i grind i grind everything but the loins um i grind it all up and you know Ground, ground deer makes great taco meat, meatloaf, whatever. You know, you can add fat to it if you want, but it's fairly lean meat. It's real lean meat, actually. So you don't get a, you know, it's not great hamburger material or anything, but makes a great taco meat and stuff. So I grind everything but the loins. And uh, this year I put everything in a cooler. I've just got a real cheap um, Yeti type roto motive cooler. And, uh, I put it on the cooler and I put ice on it and I just, I, I kind of got to thinking, I got researching a little bit on aging meats and I was like, well, I'll just see how far I can take it. And I added a little bit of ice every day and I drain everything off uh, out of the drain plug every night. I let that deer sit in that cooler for two solid weeks, 14 days. And uh, whenever I went and grind that meat, that was the best deer that I've ever ground. Um, I was getting a little worried because it had been so long, but I, you know, give her the old smell test every day, and, uh, you know, it wasn't going green on me, and it didn't, didn't smell bad, um, you know, I think a lot of it had to do with that, that gasketed cooler, it just didn't get a lot of air to it, and it was staying cold, but, uh, that deer, I'll tell you what, I, you grind it, there was not a bit of moisture in it, and I vacuum sealed every bit of it, uh, normally I wrap it, but I bought a vacuum sealer last year, so I vacuum sealed every bit of it, and the little drip tray or whatever, I did that whole deer, and I never had a drop, never had a drop of blood in that drip tray, just by letting that meat age out, age out, and leach all that stuff, all that moisture out. So, I was uh, I was very impressed with that. I will be doing that again for, for sure. Uh, letting it sit that long is it's spooky the first time, but it that's some of that was some of the best meat, best ground deer, and it was a, you know you guys saw a picture of it. It was a decent sized little buck there, you know it was some nice little tender dough, you know, so I was very, uh, I was very impressed with that. Let's see here. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Love the live videos. Yeah, it seems like everybody likes the live videos, so we'll, uh, we'll keep them going. I, I, we'll do one live a week. I think we'll go one live a week and then one, uh, you know, one regular. Do you trap on your own land? Yeah, I trap on my own land, but I don't have a lot of land. <laughs> so I've got about an acre and a half of timber, and that's it. So uh, like I said, my, my trapping is all asking permission, all private. Uh, I can pull a few coon off, off mine, but 
I'm not really in the area for anything else, you know. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely got to do your homework to be be trapping around here at least. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of shaking hands, kissing babies, getting permission, that whole sort of deal. So let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything, guys. Ticks and fleas, ticks and fleas, uh, very simple. I've got two cans of rain sitting right up there above my boarding station. Uh, every every canine that comes in gets sprayed down with raid. Um, it's it's not no big deal. I uh, I've done that for years. You know, a lot of people say freeze it, put it in a trash bag, whatever. Uh, but yeah, anything that you can see fleas on, just go ahead and I uh, spray it down. I'm good to go. Um, you know, same way with skunks. Everybody always just, they want to just beat a skunk to death. They've got some special family recipe of peroxide and Dawn and some new chemical that hadn't been invented yet and some space age NASA thing. I put up a ton of skunks, guys, and I can tell you right now, you run them through the rinse cycle of that washing machine with water, just water, um, and you're going to take 99% of the smell out, even if they spray I, I've never, I've always laughed every time I see somebody post that stupid recipe uh, of, uh, you know, trying to get the stink out of skunks. I, I, it's just comical to me. Um, good old washing water, right? Uh, but anyway, I got a super chat here I want to catch up on. Keep the live videos. Thanks for the cooking tips tonight. Hopefully I have muskrat in the trap tomorrow. I'll give it a try. That's from Travis. Oh, Travis, I'm not going to try your last name because I'll embarrass myself. But, Travis, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Travis. I hope you do. I hope you catch a muskrat. And I hope you give it a try. Um, definitely definitely the way to go. I can tell you right now, I'm going to finish that off. And what I don't eat, I'll, I'll take for lunch tomorrow. Because there is, there's nothing wrong with eating that stuff, guys. Um, you know, good preparation. Uh, like I said, clean preparation. And uh, you're good to go. We've got another chat here from uh, Charles T. Murray. Charles, I appreciate the super chat. Charles is a guy. Charles comments on a lot of my videos. Um, I see his name come up all the time. Charles, I appreciate it. Uh, obviously, guys, I'm not able to, to respond to every comment. But uh, I, whenever I see a name that stands out, I would like, I like, to, like to give it back to him. So I appreciate it, Charles. Let's see. I got uh, any tips for stripping tails off a of coon? Watch my videos, guys. It's it's not as hard as what you want to make it out to be. Um, I've got tens and tens of videos on skinning coons now. Um, but yeah, I uh, you know, good tail stripper and a knife, and, and and you're good to go. Definitely, just just watch my videos, right? Uh, which animals? Do you like the skin? Which animals do I like the skin? Which animals do I like the skin? The best, maybe? I don't know. I I, I feel like I'm pretty proficient in about everything. Um, I can I I've done coon more than anything. I I've skinned more coon than anything else, and I can rip through them things in about. I I beat a minute thirty time on myself a couple of times, but I can average about two minutes. So. I guess I guess a coon. I I can I'm set up for it too. You know that's a big reason uh, I'm set up for it. Ah, I pretty much enjoy everything. We got a super chat here. Another one. This Trapper J. I enjoy the live streams, bud. Hope you continue doing them. Hey, I appreciate it, Trapper J. I I appreciate it. Yeah, I I enjoy the tra uh, the live live deal. Uh, it's a little bit more interactive, you know. I uh. I like I like that little bit of interaction. So, you know, I had had plans last night and uh, and they kind of fell through a little bit. So I, like the good millennial I am, I kind of got on the uh, did the whole uh, get on the Facebook and and post a little and things like that. And so many of you guys out there, I did the whole social media deal for like an hour last night, and I. 
My phone said before I started this, I had like 215 friend requests. And uh, guys, nothing against you. I'm just not all into that. I'm not going to sit there and look through everybody. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't friend a lot of people, right? So to all the people out there, there may be some in here that that's friend requested me today. I, I appreciate it. That's, that's a lot of the reason I don't get on social media all the time. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of got a kick out of it. My phone it was going off all day long. So it's nothing against you peop you guys out there. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to screen everybody. And I'm just, I'm just going to stay, stay the way I am. So I did. I got a kick out of that. But uh, let's see here. Make sure. I'm always coon hunting with blue ticks. No, uh, I have a blue tick, uh, but I've coon hunted uh, uh, over walkers, um, red bones, uh, black and tans. I don't know, a bunch of different breeds. A bunch of different breeds. I got a, coon, I got a blue tick, so I mean, that's what you guys saw uh, most of the time. I, I do like the blue tick, honestly. Uh, I started a Facebook group, and it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Yeah, that was Trapper J. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Um, you know, the more and more you get out there, it's just, I, I can't handle it all. I, I really can't handle it all. I appreciate it, though, there, Trapper J. Um, there's a lot going on. A lot going on. And I'm not a guy who just sits there on his phone all day. You know, I always get that question, uh, you know, being, being a YouTuber, I guess you call it. I don't really consider myself a YouTuber, but... Yeah, I, I really don't watch that much YouTube, right? Because you're always so busy doing stuff. You've always got to either come up with content or edit stuff or it's just so busy, you know, all the time. So I totally feel you, man. But yeah, I, uh, back to the blue tick deal, right? So uh, hunting over a blue tick as many years as I did. And I mean, like I said, I've got pretty good experience with other, other breeds. I, I will go back to that... I guess you're going to say slow, methodical breed, I guess, would be the proper term. I don't know. It, it, you, and you got to hunt over, you got to hunt over a slower paced dog versus, you know, a wired up dog. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's not some blue ticks that are just wired like a walker dog, you know, but I would much rather hunt over, a, you know, like my dog was always real slow, methodical hunting. It wasn't that walker that just did laps and laps and laps around. And I enjoyed that part of it, uh, you know. Obviously, I never did it for, for money or for the, you know, I just did it for the sport of it. But I really do like that that blue tick. Uh, I always get the question, my dog, Rebel Dog, is a Gascon blue tick. He's a big, big, big breed of blue tick. Um, but I, I, uh, I don't know. I just enjoy it. I, I just enjoy walking through the woods. There's nothing better than walking through that woods. And whenever that dog opens up, I mean... I don't know, just something about it. It'll just, man, it just make your spine tingle. Still, I mean, as many times as you've done it, there's something about being in the pitch dark and hearing that dog open. So, I do, I miss it, because I, I didn't get to hunt him last year. Obviously, I'm not going to hunt him this year. You know, he's just old and retired. He can't take it, but I, I do, I miss it. And there will be more. There will be more. We've got another super chat here. Everything, everything sharp and more. Thanks for answering my questions about ticks. I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, like I said, raid, raid, spray them down. Uh, it's cheap. You know, and I got the cheap stuff, the hot shot or whatever. I don't buy the good stuff. You know, just spray them down. You'll see them fleas just fall right off the suckers. So, you know, a lot of times, too, if you can get them cold, uh, you know, obviously I, I end up skinning my stuff more cold than anything. But once that crude will go cold, a lot of times the fleas will leave. So keep them out of, out of the shed. Um, I get that question all the time. You know, I've had my dog in my first shed for 10 years, uh, and I've never had an issue with him getting, you know, uh, fleas or anything off of the fur that I bring in. So, let's see. Uh, let's make sure I didn't miss anything. Have I gone coon hunting this year? Yeah, I have. Um, I didn't video it. That was kind of one of them deals. I was unsure. Uh, you know, obviously, some people feel uncomfortable with the camera in their face. But I did go with a buddy. He had some dogs. We went 
we went a couple of times. Um, but yeah, like I said, I old Rebel Dog there. He, he's retired. He's he's just he's porch dog now. So uh, if you guys saw the video I did this summer, he had a he had a bad spell. Uh, almost lost him. So he is no longer a hunting dog. He is a a true pet. For the first time, he's he's just eating food for free. He's not really earning his keep, but he gave me a lot of good years. So never seen a dog that retrieve a coon like that. Now that was a first. So got another super chat here. Uh Lance Plano. I'm gonna say Lance Plano. Um English is hard, guys. Reading is difficult. Hope I didn't butcher your last name. Lance, thanks so much for your time and effort bringing us videos, your fur handling videos are the best. Keep up the good work. Lance, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that. I'm glad uh I always, you know, always feels good whenever you hear those those words, you know, that something that you did helped somebody out. So I really appreciate it. Let's see here. Make sure I haven't uh I haven't missed anything here. Comments were going by pretty Competition hounds. Yeah, I mean, since we're since we're on the subject, I I have I I actually um, I, I've been on some competition hunts before, and it's just not for me. Um, it was cool. It was a cool experience. Um, I've done some PKC and AKC both. Uh, I've been on on the hunts, you know, where they score them, and oh man, it just I don't know. It's not as relaxing. I was I always thought a coon hunting is relaxing. You know, we'd always go after a long day of work and you go out there and you hear that dog bellow way down in the bottoms and uh you know, yeah, he may have been out there three or four hundred yards, but it was never never really work, you know. That was always kind of my uh I don't know, release or whatever you want to call it. And uh, you know, it was great hunting too, because you don't have to be quiet. Uh you know, it's not like sitting in a deer stand or anything. You can have a big group of people, you know. I was, uh, I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Who do I sell to? So this year is going to be a little different, obviously, um, with NAFA not doing their deal. So I will probably, obviously, as I've said before, I'm not trapping hard at all. Um, I won't have a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I will probably split it up 50 50. I'll sell half to Grownwald and I'm going to probably ship the other half up to Fur Harvester just to see. More than likely, what I'm going to do, obviously, I'm cherry picking the stuff anyway as I catch it. Um, but I will take the best of the best and I will probably send it to auction and then whatever's left, I'll, I'll send to Grown or I'll take to Grownwald. Um, they've got a route that's only about 45 minutes away from me, so I can take it. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Grownwald and Fur Harvesters are pretty much the big, the two big players left in the game now that NAFA's la left. Um, Grownwald being a kind of buy here, pay here situation. You drive up to the truck, they grade your fur right there, they give you a check, you walk away. Fur Harvesters is kind of just like NAFA was. You know, you ship your stuff up there, they hold a couple, three auctions a year, and, uh, you know, you get paid whenever it sells. So... Just a, whatever you want to go through, um, I will, like I said, I'll probably split my stuff up. Um, I don't have real high hopes for, for anything, but uh, that, that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Do you guys run coyotes out there with dogs? Yeah, there's a few guys out there. There's a few guys. I, I've been a few times. Um, I didn't video it. It's that's that's different now. I'll tell you what. If you've never been on a on a hunt with dogs for coyotes, man, I'll tell you that's that's exciting. That's a whole different sport too now. Um, but yeah, maybe one of these days I'll get a hold of them guys. I've got a I've got a few guys. Uh, I got a few guys that that still do it. So. That'd be that'd make a cool video for you guys. I think you'd you'd enjoy that. That's that's different. That's different. Running coyotes with dogs and I'll tell you what, there's some strategy to that. There's there's some real strategy to it. Let's see. We're probably gonna go about another 15 minutes, guys. Um we're gonna get off of here. Like I said, I don't want to run too late because 
I still got to skin that whole pile of stuff and, uh, and 5.30 is going to come quick. So, but, uh, yeah, we'll probably go about another 15 minutes. Um, yeah, Grunwald's got a channel. Uh, Grunwald's got a channel and, uh, and they, they have been posting some, uh, some live videos. Obviously the guy, uh, the video I did earlier, that was, that was primarily based off of Grunwald. Uh, you know, it's a, he's a real honest guy. I'm not going to lie. Um, uh, you know, he tells it like it is, uh, which is cool. You know, we need that. We need that now, so. Let's see here. Crab size for coon, I highly recommend one and a half. Don't matter what brand. Uh, one and a half, and if you can have, if you buy it double jawed or, or double jaw it yourself, that's, I still to this day, I think the one and a half double jaw, best coon trap ever made. It beats dog fruits. It's so much more versatile, uh, especially for a new guy starting out. And if you're starting out, I would recommend six dog fruits and, and six, uh, six, whatever brand you want, one and a half double jaws. Um, I get a lot of those questions. I get a lot of those questions all the time. But yeah, that would be my go-to uh, for a new guy starting out. That way, you know, you, you're very versatile, right? So... Let's see and make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, let's see. Don't think I'm missing any comments here, guys. Yep. No, it's been fun, guys. It's been fun. Hope you guys, uh, <laughs> hope you all took something from it. Like I said, I had, I had a ton of people message me about, about eating the, uh, <laughs> About eating stuff so I've always had a bunch of people inquire about that you know what do you do with the, the different things you catch so anyway yeah like I've always said uh, I do eat quite a bit of quite a bit of what I what I catch so uh, you know what what I got right there on the table that'll feed a family for a couple of meals you know big family so um, definitely definitely the way to go let me make sure I'm not missing any comments here. Do you use box traps, live traps, I'm assuming? Um, here and there, uh, yeah, I do, but they're just, you know, they're expensive, number one. They're a pain to haul around. And, uh, you know, for the most part, my nuisance trapping, if you want to call it that, is uh, is usually coons and possums. And I have became very proficient over the years with dog proofs. Uh, you know, using them around house cats and dogs and everything else. So that's normally what I do uh, if I get get into that situation rather than live trap them. Um, you know, just switch up the bait and uh, and use dog proofs. So let's see here. Got another question. Is cable easier to staple? Is cable easier to staple dog proofs to logs and trees? Is cable easier? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, I've got multiple videos uh, that will answer your questions on that, and they're titled where you can find them. Um, but yeah, I, I use a I use a pogo anchor, which is you know a 16 or an 18 inch piece of cable with a washer on the end of it, and that is what I grab my fence staple through. Uh, you know, I I straddle that with the staple. Uh, that's how I anchor. So. Hope that answers your question. Let's see. Best way to sharpen a sharpen flushing knife. Best way to sharpen flushing knife start off with is use a steel. Nine times out of ten, that thing's not dull. It's just you know you gotta kind of understand how a knife gets dulled anyway. The little fuzzy things on the end they they should be like this and they start opening up, which makes your dull knife. Um, run a steel across it both ways if that doesn't work i recommend just the stone use a stone um i've got videos on it i'll do some more videos i get a lot of questions i'll do some more videos on that sometime this year uh i wouldn't go all out uh, everybody always asks me about sharpening a flushing knife with a work sharp and i i don't i don't agree with that uh that's not, you're not putting the right angle on it you want a single bevel on your flushing knife um at least in my opinion you do so whatever bevel angle that that flushing knife came from is one that you should maintain. 
And I mean, if you're a guy that's dulling a fleshing knife that much, either you're doing just a stupid amount of fur that I can't even imagine, or you're really, you're really damaging your knife, you know, you need to change up your ways. But uh, for the most part, run a steel over it. Just to give you guys a, kind of a reference, on a normal year, whenever I trap hard, I touch up my knife probably two to three times a season, maybe. Um, you know, I think a lot, honestly, to a lot of people feeling their knife is dull. Um, you know, and this is not everybody, but this is just uh, my opinion, what I've seen, is the knives aren't clean, right? You get that layer of fat on it, and they're not clean, and it just balls up that edge. You guys can, well, you maybe you can't see. I don't know. I've got a towel sitting right next to the shelf where I put my fleshing knife. And after every single critter, I wipe that off. And I wipe it off especially, especially good whenever I'm done fleshing for the evening. That way that fat doesn't um, harden up on that edge of that knife blade. Because once that happens, you know, you're just kind of turning it into a blunt edge. So start off with the steel. You don't like that, go to a stone. Um. But I think you can. I think a lot of people can ruin a knife quickly by uh, by really going at it. You know, if you have a quality knife to begin with, it's it's been it's had an edge put on it. Um, you know, that's that's right. I guess would be the proper term. So snares. No, we can't use snares here in Illinois. I get a lot of questions all the time about snares, cable restraints, all that. We cannot snare, we can snare a beaver, but it's super regulated and I've never done it just because of all the hoops, you, literally the hoops you got to jump through. Um, I've always stayed with footholds and conibears. bears. As far as dry land, we can't snare, we can't cable restraint. Um, hopefully that changes. I would like to see that change in Illinois. I really would. Um, I can 100% guarantee my numbers especially would skyrocket if we could if we could use cable restraints, not even snares, just, just cable restraints. Uh, we get shut down so much during the course of a season simply because of weather, rain, mud, all that other crap, uh, where cable restraint could, could continue working, you know? So now I, I hope eventually one day that we could use, use cable restraints. Um, I'm not even all about snares to be quite honest. I think snares would actually hurt, um, hurt the majority of, of Illinois. It, it is, I guess you would say, it's not populated, but there's, I think it would be, it would put a bad, bad eye on, um, you know, unless there was, they were super regulated. Cable restraints I would love to have though. Let's see here. Make sure I'm not, uh, make sure I'm not missing anything here. Let's see. Uh, nope, I don't think I'm missing any guys. Guys, we're gonna go for about five more minutes tonight. Uh, hope you all, uh, hope you all enjoyed this live. I had a really good time, cooked a good meal, and I uh, got to chat with you guys. So obviously, I got a, I got a good little bit of work there ahead of me. Um, I gotta get all that done for tomorrow. So I really do appreciate everybody coming around. We'll, uh, we'll take questions and stuff for about another five minutes, and then I'm going to sign off of here. Uh, and we'll probably do this again, because uh, I do enjoy this. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy interacting here with you guys. You know, you always come to a point, back in the day, I was able to keep up with the comments. And uh, I really did enjoy that, but, you know, anymore, I just, I just can't keep up with the comments, so... You know, it's tough. I enjoy the comments. I push the comments. I That is one thing that, you know, whenever I upload a video, I love reading the comments uh, that you guys leave. But I just, it's very hard to reply to them all the time. So this is cool, interacting with you guys. Um, yeah. We're going to go just about another five minutes. If, uh, if anybody's in here new and they haven't hit that like button, please, by all means, hit that like button for me. Um, I would appreciate it. This has been fun again, guys, but let's see. If you ever come to Alabama crappie fishing at Wise Lake, that's totally off subject. I can tell you right now, the majority of this audience is not all about fishing. I've tried, but I would definitely love to fish Wise Lake in Alabama. You guys got some big crappie in there. 
You guys got some big crappie down there, for sure. <laughs> Let's see here. If fur prices were up, would you switch from Natty Light to Budweiser? Oh, I like that. Well, who said that? James Brandt. No, I probably wouldn't, to be quite honest. I, you know, I get a lot of flack for drinking the cheap beer, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> that was funny, though. That was funny. I probably wouldn't. I, I'm, I'm stingy enough. I'd just save my money. I probably won't see fur prices high enough to ever do that, though. So, <laughs> that is funny. Let's see. I wish YouTube wasn't so strict. I agree. I wish YouTube wasn't so strict, guys. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've always, I've always kind of tried to walk this fine line through YouTube and. Uh, you know, bring you guys educational content too. And it's, it's tough nowadays. I'll tell you what, it, it is tough, but <laughs> yep. It's been fun guys. I really enjoy everybody coming out. We'll have to do it again. Um, while I got everybody in the, uh, in the comment section there. Real quick, if we do another live next week, uh, would you guys like to have a certain topic? Obviously, tonight was just a, just a general hangout. We didn't do much. Well, I cooked supper. You guys watched me cook supper. Um, would you guys like to have a, a dedicated topic? I could get to working on that. Or would you just uh, rather just have kind of this little, this little BS session? Um, let me know in the comments. We've still got a few people in here. I'd be curious to see uh, what you guys would like to uh, like to have. So, you know, I still can't believe it, man. It is right now, guys. It is 56 degrees. Oh, usually this thing's insulated. It's 56 degrees in here, and uh, I'm on fire going. It was that warm today. It is nuts. Um, yeah, it's gonna cool off. It's gonna cool off in the next two days, though get back down below freezing but yeah oh uh, reading the comments now guys we're just gonna stay on for just a couple more a couple more minutes just kind of get your guys's input as far as uh what you guys would like to see out of a live Jeff tags do I use a pen to make your trap tags or do I use a stamp? I use an electric engraver. I did that in one video actually. I talked about it. I use an electric engraver right back there and I use uh, flashing and I write my name in all of it. Can I trap rabbits? No, we can't trap rabbits. We can't trap rabbits and can't trap squirrels. Not legally in Illinois. So. Personal wall hanger collection. You know, I got that after that last video. I really don't have that much stuff, honestly. <laughs> I think I've only got... What have I got? Five or six. Five or six hides is all I've got as far as personal wall hangers. Um, I kept all the cool ones, but uh, yeah, I'm just not really that attached to that kind of stuff. I mean, I've got, I've got one of every species that I can catch here, and then I've got a really dark coon. Uh, that I caught. It was almost jet black. Almost like a sheen to it. That was cool. Um, and also, for those of you who don't know, those don't ever sell. Those specialty ones, they don't ever sell very high. So, kept that. Um, that's really about it. I got a couple of real clear foxes. Real cool. Uh, a couple of real clear coyotes. But yeah, other than that, I've got I've got one of every species that, uh, that, uh, that we can trap here. And that's really about it. I don't know. I've never. Some people want to keep everything that they catch, you know. And I've just. I don't know. Whenever you've seen just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them go through, it's just. Oh, I guess over time it's just not that big of a deal. I don't know. I I don't really feel that attached to them. Um, I don't know. I've got my first gray fox I ever caught. 
Uh, I sold the first otter I ever caught. I will keep the first bobcat if I ever get one, one of those. But yeah, really don't have a don't really have a lot of, of that stuff uh, as far as the wall hangers. I've got a few, but. Let's see here. We're going to get off here in just a couple minutes, guys. I'm just reading through the comments, kind of seeing what, what you guys uh, what you guys would like to see out of a live, and then we're going to we're gonna say goodnight to you all, because, like I said, I've got to clean up this, what I've turned now into my kitchen here, and then uh, I've got to turn this thing back into a fur shed and, uh, and get some stuff done, actually, tonight. So... Uh. Do I ever catch any otter? Yeah, I catch I yeah, I catch otter all the time. Got multiple videos on that. Uh, I haven't caught any this year, but I haven't targeted them yet either. So that usually goes hand in hand whenever I go beaver trapping. And I have I haven't went beaver trapping yet. Let's see. Not a what did I catch today? What did I catch today? That the table of death right there. Uh, I've got seven muskrats and three coons today. Um, I was trapping for farmers uh, muskrats in, so I think I had 16 or 17 sets out. Just a little number of sets. Oh, I caught a couple of possums, too. I did keep one possum. Uh, it was a big old boy. Uh, I, I'm trying to remake the, the fur handling series. I don't know if YouTube's going to let me let me do it, but I did keep one big old possum today. Let's see. Oh, let's see here. What kind of knives do I use for skinning? I've said that multiple times. I use resharpened butcher's knives. I don't, I've never been one for the Havalon or whatever those different replaceable blades are. Uh, I, uh, I use resharpened butcher's knives and I use the work sharp to touch them up after about every critter because they're a four dollar knife and I don't care about them so uh, I just keep them sharp and just keep going. So, let's see. <laughs> All right y'all well we've been going for a while and uh, I appreciate everybody coming out. Like I said, I uh, I hope you all enjoyed the little cooking session. I had a ton of people ask me about that, so I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to sign off of here and finish my night skinning and fleshing from, uh, from yesterday. I've got to still flesh everything from yesterday because that's the rotation that I use. But uh, anyway... I appreciate it, guys. Uh, we will definitely do this again. Like I said, be looking out. Sunday and Wednesday is normally the uh, my upload schedule. If you haven't, real quick, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit it on future videos. It's really, really helping me out. Uh, so, yeah, with that being said, guys, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to sign off of here for this one. I appreciate everybody coming and hanging out with me tonight. Y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. We're out.